cancer, one of the most feared diseases that will touch almost everyone, whether through a friend, family member, or even personally. The good news is cancer rates continue to lower and outcomes have improved greatly. The best way to fight cancer is with early intervention. Taking responsibility to complete a few simple cancer screenings greatly reduces the likelihood of becoming a preventable statistic. And there are additional prevention measures everyone can take. If I had one message today, it would be sun protection. Sunscreens, clothing, shade, sun protection will prevent skin cancers. Everyone should limit exposure, but some people are especially sensitive to the sun's rays. People who are redheaded, uh, blonde, blue-eyed, burn easily, are certainly the people that are most at risk for bad blistering sunburns and therefore for skin cancers down the road. The second group of people that are at very high risk are those people who have chosen at some point in their lives to use tanning beds or tanning parlors. One of the misconceptions is that tanning itself is fine, just avoid the bad blistering sunburns. Those people who've done extensive tanning throughout their lives are also at very high risk for basal cell and squamous cell types of skin cancers. People don't put enough sunscreen on. You need to fill a shot glass, and that will cover your whole body, but we tend to squirt a little in each hand and pat it around. We know that if you use a 50 sunscreen but don't use enough, you get about half the protection. You get about a 25. For that reason, we tell people that we like the higher numbered sunscreens and to really go ahead and slather the stuff on. People can do some of their own self-screening, which is really important. After all, our skin is on the outside. We're looking for spots that are new, that are bleeding, that are changing in size or in color, or are symptomatic, where a mole has always just been a normal mole, but suddenly becomes itchy or irritated. All of these things should absolutely push someone to be seen by their dermatologist. Colorectal cancer is the second most common type of cancer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. We're fortunate because we have a screening test called colonoscopy that allows us to go in and find polyps or what we call precursor lesions that can develop into colon cancer over time. Polyps grow slowly and generally it takes years before polyps become cancerous. It's one-stop shopping. You can go in, you can do the colonoscopy. If you find any abnormalities, you have an opportunity to go ahead and deal with them at the same time. Oftentimes, we can spare patients an operation uh, removing some of these larger polyps, and the threat for cancer has been removed. Most patients, after the examination is done, uh, because it's done typically with sedation, is they'll turn to you and ask, when is the test going to start? And actually the examination itself is very easy, particularly when sedation is provided. The worst part about the test is the preparation the day before. And everyone has to go through a bowel cleanse. It's not a easy or straightforward process and it's a bit of an inconvenience. One of the issues with screening is just knowing that you need to be screened. So there are a lot of people who are over age 50 who don't realize that they should actually undergo a screening examination such as colonoscopy. Either they haven't seen their primary care doctor, it hasn't been mentioned to them, um, or they don't recognize how common colorectal cancer is. And so I think one of the most important things that we can do is educate people about the importance of getting screened. And the real opportunity is that about 90% of the cases are preventable. There's no excuse. Everyone should have a colonoscopy by age 50. And some people may need to start earlier. Talk to your doctor about risk factors. For men, the most common type of cancer is prostate cancer. Screening for prostate cancer is extremely important and easy. The PSA blood test is a non-invasive way of screening for prostate cancer. It enables us to identify men who might be at risk for prostate cancer. And there's the digital rectal exam, which is the finger examination of the prostate. 
One of the big misconceptions about prostate cancer is that it's a non-aggressive uh, disease of older men. Everyone will get it at some point, and, and that's a big misconception. A lot of prostate cancer diagnoses are on the less aggressive side, and the prognosis is outstanding, but there can be very aggressive subtypes. So what I would tell most men is, it's better to know if you have the cancer, because if you're definitely someone who has an aggressive subtype of this disease, granted that's a minority of men, but if you're one of those men who has aggressive cancer, we want to act on it because it will kill you. On the other hand, if you don't have aggressive disease, we can follow it, we can watch it, we have ways of, of monitoring it without having to undergo treatment. With many types of cancer, there are no physical symptoms until the later stages of disease. Taking responsibility to pursue early cancer screenings leads to better outcomes and much better quality of life. For prostate cancer, there are no symptoms until it's quite progressed and quite late in the stage. So by the time there's symptoms, people are pretty much beyond treatment and beyond uh, really a chance of a, of a good outcome. So the key is to screen men earlier before there are symptoms. Women are at the highest risk for breast cancer. There are a number of screening tools available. Catching breast cancer early saves thousands of lives every year. The number one sign of a breast cancer is feeling a lump within the breast, and that's why we highly recommend that people do breast self-exam monthly. That should be started around the age of 20 and done approximately a week or so after the menstrual cycle. From the age of 20 to approximately 39 years old, you should be doing the clinical breast exam with your physician at least once every three years. However, continue to do monthly breast self-exam. And then mammography, of course, is done routinely for anybody over the age of 40 and should be done yearly. One of the newest screenings available for breast cancer is genetic testing. Genetic testing is a very controversial. Many women walk into the physician's office and request to have it done. Speak with your physician because the family history is extremely important as to whether or not you qualify or should have genetic testing. It's important to tell your doctor if anyone in your family has a history of cancer or any other disease. Unexplained weight loss or bleeding is a red flag that should be reported to a doctor immediately. Mostly due to smoking, lung cancer continues to be one of the deadliest diseases. It used to be breast cancer was number one for women and prostate cancer was number one for men. Now lung cancer is unfortunately the number one cause of death for both men and women. It's simple. The more someone smokes over a lifetime, the more likely they are to get lung cancer. About 90% of cases are from smoking. Some common things that one can look for, basic smoking um, intake history, how long you've smoked, how many packs per year you've smoked. Most people have no symptoms of lung cancer, but a cough that won't go away is a red flag. Persistent cough that's treated with antibiotics and still doesn't go away, that may be a red flag. If anyone coughs up blood, that's a red flag as well. Screening for lung cancer would be clinical. You'd have a physical exam. We also do blood testing. Many doctors also recommend a low-dose CAT scan for patients with symptoms and long-term smokers. The CAT scan is important even for people who quit smoking years ago. Who should be screened for lung cancer? So someone between the ages of 55 and 80 who are a 30-pack per year history have quit within the past 15 years, then they should call into a center that is accredited for a low-dose CAT scan screening, and if they meet the criteria, then they can be screened. If a person has any signs or symptoms or family history or they're a smoker, I would definitely contact your primary care physician. The key to preventing lung cancer is simple. Don't start smoking, and if you do smoke, quit. Many positive strides have been made in cancer prevention and treatment. By taking a few simple steps, everyone can reduce their risk of cancer. Get all recommended cancer screenings on time. Don't use any tobacco products. Protect your skin from the sun. Know your family history and discuss it with your doctor. Maintain a healthy weight and exercise daily. Pursuing screenings for early detection and practicing prevention measures is the best way to stop cancer in its tracks.